Today we're gonna be talking about five tips that you can use if you're starting out with CrossFit that will help you become more effective, a lot more efficient in a quicker amount of time. These are some of the things that I ran into when I started and uh, they will help you, I promise. Okay, the first thing we're gonna talk about is your ego. You have to leave the ego at the door. When you first get into CrossFit, you wanna do everything. You see these guys on YouTube, they're snatching like 300 pounds, you know, they're clean and jerking, you know, like 400. Uh, they're running, you know, 400 meters in like less than 60 seconds, you know, during their Metcon. So you see all this stuff and you're like, man, I wanna do that. But you gotta remember, you're starting out. So these guys have been doing this for years, some of these elite athletes, and they've conditioned themselves over the, over the time. And they've gotten a lot better at it. So, and you're not going to the games tomorrow. It's not like you just started, you know, shooting hoops in basketball and you're gonna go into the NBA next year. So just take your time and leave your ego at the door. The thing is, is that with some of these movements, especially like a, uh, a snatch or something, it's a very complex move with weightlifting. In certain movements, you can hurt yourself. Even if you do them correctly, you can sometimes get hurt. So, and a lot of guys, uh, they'll go in there and they wanna pick up a lot of weight also on top of that. So if you're doing a complex movement and you're trying to do a lot, a lot, you're trying to put a lot of weight on there and you don't even have the mechanics down or the technique, technique's number one, and then comes your mechanics <clears throat> and then you can work on your speed and then you can get into more weight. <clears throat> But if you just try to get in there and you try to, you know, a lot of these guys get in there and I've, I've you know, I'm fall prey to this a little bit, you know, put a little bit more weight on it than I should have. <clears throat> but I have learned to <clears throat> leave your ego at the door. Okay, the second one on the list is not doing workouts or exercises that you hate doing. So a lot of guys, they'll see the workout of the day and they won't even go to the gym that day. They'll skip it. They'll see, you know, muscle ups, they'll see handstand walks or something and they'll just skip it. The thing is, is you want to work on everything. You don't have to be the best at one thing. A lot of people say, well, you know, oh man, you know, what's in your wheelhouse? What are you good at? Well, you don't want to have a wheelhouse. I remember Matt Frazier saying this a couple years back. They asked him, you know, what's in your wheelhouse? And he says, I train so I don't have a wheelhouse. Meaning you want to be pretty good at everything. You don't have to be the best at one thing. You just got to be pretty good at everything. So just remember to uh, don't skip any workouts. Don't skip uh, exercises that you don't like. So, and just do them. It's not a big deal. You'll get better at them. If you hate handstands, that's what you need to be doing. Why would you work on something that you're already good at? Work on definitely the weaknesses. You promise your, your, your strengths will always be there and they will complement your weaknesses. But your weaknesses will definitely complement your strengths. So you want to bring up your weaknesses. Those are the ones that you need to be working on. So don't skip out on uh, workouts and exercises that you don't like. Okay, number three on the list. Okay, do ancillary work. Meaning... If there's certain movements that you are not good at that come up in the workout of the day or something that you see a lot that you know you're not good at, like let's say they're double unders or let's say they're pistols or let's say they're handstand pushups or even handstands or something, work on those. Do some, there's two ways you can do that. The way I used to do it, and I've done, well I've done it both ways, but I started doing it in the beginning. I would pick a day and I would do just that exercise for about 15 to maybe 30 minutes. So if you need help on handstand walks or you know, muscle ups or something, practice that for about a good 15 or 30 minutes one day. Like one day a week, pick and work on those. What I would actually do is I would rotate. I would do handstand push-ups, uh, double unders, and then pistols. So I would do one minute of those and I'd rest a minute. Then I would do another minute of these and I would rest a minute. And then I would do a round robin. And I got really good at doing all three of these. But some people say, you know, just do one at a time. Me, I was doing like two or three at a time. But what I'm trying to say is, what I'm getting at is do ancillary work. So work on those individually. You don't have to do them you know, while you're into working out or whatever, you can do them individually. Now, on the other hand, you can do them in a workout and I've done that. So like, let's say I was practicing on my muscle ups and I started getting them pretty good. And what I did was I started putting them into my Metcons. And when you're in the middle of a Metcon, it forces you to do that exercise. So as long as you got pretty good technique on it and things like that, then you can add it into a Metcon. Don't just throw it in a Metcon if you have no idea what you're doing. I mean, at least have it down to a, a, a point where you can do it five, six, seven times out of 10, you know, properly. Then you can start sticking them into your Metcons. So always work on your ancillary work, meaning these exercises that, you're, that you need to bring up to speed, if you will. Okay, number four is gonna be having your own equipment. And I don't mean you have to go out and buy a rig and, you know, a GHD and a, a row machine, but you do need to have your own equipment as far as uh, your shoes. Definitely you need to have shoes. You don't have to have lifters and all that for weightlifting. Something that you could do though and then put them in your bag, have them with you, but you need to have a good pair of shoes, especially when you're doing a lot of running and jump ropes and stuff. Uh, what else? I'm going to say a jump rope. 
okay? This one here I'm putting up right now. This one here, you can go down below and click on the link and get it. I've got one of these. These are extremely nice jump ropes. So they're a little bit heavier than a speed rope, but I have both though. So I have this rope here that I'm showing you and I have a speed rope. So, but you need to have your own speed rope, uh, maybe a weight belt, uh, what else, gloves, uh, maybe some sweatbands. If you're a sweater like me, I sweat profusely. So you might wanna have a sweatband. Uh, knee sleeves, you know, especially if you have something going on with the knees. Uh, yeah, so just look around and see what kind of workouts you're gonna be doing. And you, may, you need to make sure you have a certain amount of equipment with you. Because without the equipment, it's going to make it worse, especially with gloves. Like if you don't have gloves and you're doing grunt work like sandbag cleans and a lot of weightlifting, you want to use some gloves or you're going to get some calluses. And even with gloves, you're going to get calluses. So, and also as far as, far as like, let's say you go on a vacation or you're going to go do something. Like right now I'm on vacation. So I'm in the United States right now. So I brought some of my stuff with me. So it's a good thing to have your own jump rope. It's a good thing to have your own, you know, your gloves and things like that. So basically you want to have your own equipment. Don't forget that it's 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 critical or you might go to a gym and they might not have anything so if you have your own stuff you're prepared okay number five is going to be journaling i'm big on journaling i've mentioned this before i literally have it i don't have it with me well i've got one but i keep a journal and i write down all my exercises so these right here i'm throwing up right now these are some of the ones that i just did and i wrote down my times so now I know and I can go put those into my journal. What I'll do is about a month or two later, I'll do the workouts again to see if my times came down or I can also increase the weights on some of them. But journaling means you're writing down what your exercises are and then you're also putting down the date and the time, you know, the time it took you to do the Metcon because later on that, that's, that's gonna be extremely critical data for you to use because you wanna know if you've gotten any better. You know, you're like, okay, am I any fit? Am I fitter than I was a year ago? Am I fitter than I was six months ago? But you can look back into your journal and you can see everything. Now, some of these guys, they use apps. There's apps out there you can download and they can, you can put all your workouts in there. Me, I guess I'm a little bit more old school, so I like to have a journal where I can write it down. In my journal, the one that I personally have that I got off of, a, I, got that, I think I got on Amazon, uh, basically it has all the workouts built into it too. It's got all the hero workouts, so Cindy, Diane, Murph, it's got them all written in there already for you. And then it's got like, you know, a bunch of blank pages so you can put your workouts in there with the dates and the times. Journaling is number five. You need to journal. If you're new, I'm telling you, you if you miss out on this later on, you'll wish you did this. So you don't want to be that person. So go ahead and start journaling now. And then, and then you get into the habit of it. But it's a great thing because you need the information, I promise you. Later on, you're going to look back and go, wow, man, I've, been, I've, been, you know, I've gotten so much better at all this stuff. Look at all these numbers. Look at all my numbers. So anyway, journaling is number five. So anyway, those are the five tips I'm going to give you, especially for somebody that's just starting out in CrossFit. All right. Those are some of the five pillars of success that I think that can help you. So if you found any uh, value in this video, please share. Uh, smash the uh, like button and uh, consider subscribing if you're new here. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you.